Well, hi everybody and welcome. Thank you for joining us. Let me make sure I hit okay on my tweet. There we go, because the tweet says we're live now, so you kind of have to wait. Anyway, very glad you were here. This is the most exciting, amazing, troubling, disconcerting, worrisome <laughs> Photoshop launch ever. The stuff that I'm going to show you in this stuff is, I, I'm not, I'm not overhyping this when I say this is the most amazing stuff I've seen in Photoshop in at least 20 years. I, I, I'm telling you, this is part demo and it's going to be part therapy session because I'm going to show you stuff that is going to be, you're going to be amazed at the technology, but some folks of us out there are going to be very like, uh-oh. It's both of those all in one because this technology, while it's kind of new uh, and, and kind of like brand new, is so well developed that like I'm shocked. Now, Adobe is calling the, the main thing today, which we're going to talk about mostly, which is called generative fill. Uh, Adobe is talking about this and they're calling it a beta. But this is as far baked as anything I've seen in a long time. It's not perfect but it is darn near perfect. It's very, very close. So um, I'm sure it's going to get better and better over time, but I want to jump in and kind of show you what it is because this is, this is historic day. It really is. This is a turning point in Photoshop's trajectory of how it works and how people work with it. And it will never be the same. I mean, and, and I'm, not, I'm not exaggerating when I tell you this is going to hurt your head. Uh, but here's basically what it is. The new feature is in the beta. Now, to get this, you literally need to go to your Creative Cloud account. And I'm just going to launch mine here to show you. Go to Creative Cloud and let me just pop it open. And where you're going to need to go is you are going to need to go over here to get this particular version of Photoshop. You're going to have to go over here. Okay, it's, it's slowly loading. So anyway. Um, so here's what we need to do. Well, for some reason, it's just loading slow. Isn't it? Well, probably because the whole world is rushing to download this. You can run this beta version of Photoshop right along with your other one, right? It's okay. They're two separate apps. But once you run this, you will never want to go to regular Photoshop again. Here it is. Take a look on screen. You're going to launch your Creative Cloud app. And right down here, it says beta apps. You're going to click on there and you're going to go get the Photoshop beta. That's what you want. That's where the crazy, wild, mind-bending stuff is. Now, regular Photoshop came out today. They got four new features. They're all great features, but not like this. All right, so let me explain what generative fill is, and this will help you understand. So when we use tools that are already kind of smart, like the healing brush or the um, content-aware fill, to do the stuff that it does, to do the magic that it does, it actually uses... Uh, the built-in, you can just show me, I'm, I'm not ready to show that, you can just show me. Okay, it uses uh, the built-in technology. It uses whatever's there. Like it looks at the photo and says, oh, you want to fix this? I'll steal from over here. This is different. This just makes crap up out of the sky. This is technology that when you see it, you're going to think aliens landed here, left us this technology and left. And this is alien technology you're going to see because this is not based on what's in your photo. Not to remove it, not to add stuff. And here's where I'm going to tell you in one sentence what it is. You can now literally, if you can imagine it, you can type it into Photoshop and it will create it. And it's different than what you've seen with Firefly and stuff. It uses that technology. But look on screen and I'll show you what I mean. So here's a shot taken I took a few years ago in Venice. Kind of stinks. <laughs> you know what it's missing? You know what stinks about a shot of Venice? There's no gondola. So you just go and get a, you know, a, a marquee tool and say, man, I wish a gondola was right here. All right. Now, there is a special tool. Let me resize my screen so you can see it. There is a new feature. Why is my screen not? I have to kind of pull it up here. Hang on one second, because my screen now that I've connected to the, the projector doesn't want to let me see the bottom of my screen. And you need to see it because there's a tool. Well, I'll just pull it up here, see if it can. Not my mail. I don't need my mail. Thank you. Right there. Ah, 
This thing, this is one of the new features that they released in Photoshop. It is a taskbar. It is fantastic. It is incredible. I've used it for a little while and I cannot imagine to not using it. In fact, all I can think of is how was this not there 30 years ago? But anyway, this is, you draw a selection and you type, you click on the word generative fill and it brings up a prompt. All right, so this is where you type in what you want. You know what I want? Uh, I want the front of a gondola. And then you click generate. It goes to Adobe's cloud. It does the math in the cloud. It takes about 10 to 15 seconds for it to go up, come back, and it's going to generate from millions and millions of images, it's going to generate a gondola right in that spot for you. Yep, there it is, front of a gondola. Done. Now, it, it doesn't just give you that gondola. It gives you different choices. So you have three variations over here. You can choose different gondolas. Which gondola do I like? Oh, I like that one. And it generates it. So now you can look at any scene and just go, oh, I wish there was this there. I wish there was that there. Here, let me, let me give you an example. Let me grab, um, let me see if I can grab something. Let me grab... Uh, Oh, well, like this one. Let's just grab this image. So uh, here we have this out of focus image. Let's say that I wanted to add some friends to this shot. You just draw a selection back here and just hit generative fill and type in add blurry friends. <laughs> Click generate. You're going to wait. We're going to have a lot of waiting today of 15 seconds at a time where we type this thing in, but you just kind of draw where they want it. But here's what's amazing. When it generates this stuff, it generates the right angle, the right perspective, the right lighting, and there's a friend in the background right there. But you want a different friend, you can choose this blurry friend, you can choose this, that's a sad blurry friend. Uh, you can just choose people in the background and it will do it. It will just generate this stuff. So whatever you can think of, you can do. You can say, but it's not just for adding stuff, it's for removing stuff. And we are just touching, we are just touching the tip of the iceberg. Just, just, the, you're just seeing the, the basics of what it'll do. And we're gonna go through all of this here. And just to let you know, we are releasing a full course on this right away with all of the different stuff that you can do. I'm gonna go into all the little details and we're gonna go through all the new features as well. So the class is called Getting Up to Speed Fast on the, uh, the new version of Photoshop and the AI-powered version of Photoshop, May 2023, because it's the May 2023 release, which is the sexy name that Adobe has given it, the May 2023 release. Anyway, but take a look at that. I mean, I'm just, I don't even know what to say. Let's take another image. Here, let's take a look at this real quick. Uh, let's say that you wanted uh, a cloud. So you could just go and generate a cloud here. Let's do that. You could just say, I kind of want some clouds or a single cloud like right there. I just want a cloud. Generative fill, you could just say cloud. You could just choose like one cloud and hit generate. Now, sometimes when you, when you do this, it's going to generate multiple clouds or I mean different, different choices. I've also noticed occasionally it will generate like a cartoon cloud. <laughs> you don't want to have to take the cartoon one. You don't have to accept it. All right, we're almost done. Look, it just put some clouds right there. Now, it gives you different clouds. You have that cloud and you have this one. Oh, I like that one, right? Or you can put in this one, it, whichever one you want, right? It's just, what? All right, now, you can also do this. Let's, oh, by the way, this is important. It create these are non-destructive. So it creates that cloud on its own separate layer with a layer mask so you can edit it if you want. If you say, oh, I don't really want that, that uh, cloud on the right, uh, I can get rid of that. But look down here. This little task bar down here, which is so amazing, has already updated because I clicked on the layer mask. It's like, do you want to subtract to the mask? Do you want to add to the mask? Do you want to hide the mask? All of these features keep updating in this bar. I'm telling you what, you use this bar for a few days and you will not be able to go back to the other one. Cause it is, all I can think of is how did they not do this earlier? This just seems like something you've wanted in Photoshop forever. I'm telling you what, I would pay for the upgrade, even though they don't make us pay for the upgrade. If they charge for the upgrade, I, I would pay just for that task bar. And it seems simple right now to use it for a day. And then you're going to be like, I can't live without this thing. All right. Um, 
Oh, there's a question from Susie. And yeah, please drop your questions in. We're going to be, that's this, well, this is a discussion. Can you move the created image? What a great question. So the way it works is it kind of creates a block where it's at. So if I pick up those clouds and I move them, you're going to see a block where they were. It's, it is not a pick it up and move it, right? Look at that. It looks at the area and generates it in that spot. So if you, want a diff, if you wanted to move your clouds and go, oh, I should have done it over there, you need to start from scratch. Here's one of the gotchas. I think that, that in the future this is going to be addressed. But right now, I would have to regenerate the cloud. But you might go, but I love the cloud that was there. Yeah, that cloud's gone forever. It was generated at that moment. So you would have to regenerate. So here's what you would do. If you said, man, I wish the cloud was over there, you're gonna throw that, that layer away, which is, that's a great thing about it being non-destructive. Then you're gonna draw over here and say, I wish that cloud was over here. And then you're gonna hit generative fill, and then you're gonna type in cloud, and then you're gonna hit generate. So you have to go and regenerate it. And you're, and you're gonna go, but I love the cloud that was there, yeah. There's got to be a way, I'm sure that Adobe is working on it, I mean, they haven't told me, but I'm sure that they're working on a way for you to move these things. But right now, because it takes that area, I see, yeah, it's a completely different cloud. And it's not just that cloud, it's, you can choose this cloud, which I like better, and that cloud, I like the cloud in the middle. I like that cloud right there. Now, watch this. Because it's using this technology, I can draw a rectangle and go behind this kind of right over here. Let's put it right there. Now, you notice I'm going behind this kind of building and I'm going to hit cloud and hit generate. Lots of questions. Uh, John Dukes. Hi, John. <laughs> John says, can I put more money in my bank account for new photography gear with this new feature? You can try. <laughs> it'll do all kinds of crazy things. I'm not sure it'll do that. Take a look on screen. Look, it generated that cloud. It generated this other cloud and it generated fake cloud. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you don't have to choose the, the bad one, all right? And this is important. If there's one that you know you don't like, because you can save this file and it will save the variations, right? It saves the, them with the file. But to keep your file size down, if you look and you go, yeah, I'm not using this crazy one. See the little X here in the variations panel? Just click on that and then it, it goes away. So now you're just left with these two. Now, if you want more clouds, you can just hit generate again. Because look, if you look over here in the properties panel, this is where a lot of your action happens. It shows you what word, or they call them prompts, what prompt you use to create this. So you could, you could change it to clouds instead of just one cloud. You can just change it here, or you can just hit the generate button and it will generate three more clouds in the same space that you, you don't have to reselect it. It knows that you're trying another version of it. It's regenerating it right now while we speak. And in just a second, it will, will be. All right, La Cuita, I think it is, says, um, if the generated image is on its own layer, can it be saved and used on other images? Absolutely, it's a, it is, this is interesting, it is its own layer. But remember, and this is kind of weird, the background is not transparent behind that. It blends it into that area. So it's like it's, it's square. Well, look, I'll show you. Take a look on screen, I'm gonna hide the background. Look, it's that whole area. So if you pick that up and take it someplace else, it needs to reblend. It needs to do it again. So, and look, here's three different sets of clouds. Here's a new cloud. There's another, ooh, I like, that's the best one yet. And the last one probably isn't gonna be the one you're gonna use. Just hit the X. Oh, these questions are good. Alrighty, <laughs> Stuart Stu, what's up? Stu says, minds will be blown. <laughs> Susan says, bring on the aliens. All right, so James says, or James asks, how about adding my own clouds? I have a collection of clouds that I took. That's called sky replacement. There's a completely different feature for using your own clouds. This particular feature is going to generate stuff for you. If you already have your own clouds, James, you're gonna to go to sky replacement. Hey, while, I'm, while we're here, watch, check this out. Let's grab this tool. Let's put a little rectangle over here and let's type in generative fill. Let's type in owl. Hit generate. Give it a few seconds and we're gonna add some stuff. So hang tight for a sec. <laughs> I 
<laughs> John, John Keenan says, is this what they mean by creative cloud? <laughs> Natalie asks, can you change the opacity? Absolutely. It's a layer just like any other layer. Oh, there's our, our, our I don't like that owl, but that's not the only owl I can choose from. I can choose this owl. I can choose this owl. I think I like the middle one best. Yeah, you can just add whatever you want. For example, um, give me one second. I want to open up uh, an image here and I'll just show you what I mean. Let me grab, where's that image? Let me grab this image right here, all right? Let's just open this real quick. Oh, I don't want to open it in camera. Raw. That's fine. All right. All right, here we go. Check this out. I'm going to get the, I'm going to get the lasso tool. I'm going to make a selection right over here. And very loose selections work great. You don't have to make, these are very loose selections. And I'm going to type in herd of sheep grazing and click generate. So here we go. Terry's got a good question. Can this be used for commercial purposes? Are there any copyright issues? So this is, is again, oh, look at that. Look at the sheep. And I don't, I don't have to go with those sheep. I can go with these sheep. I can go with these sheep. But guys, do you notice the lighting is in the right direction? The shadows, the perspective, the whole nine yards, it's all there. That's what's so incredible about this. Just sticking sheep there and it's the lights going the wrong direction and there's no shadows and all that, all that stuff, would, that would not be awesome. So it's, uh, what it's doing is just incredible. It's analyzing the scene. It sees the direction, the perspective. It, it does it all. So uh, back to Terry's question, can this be used for commercial purposes? Are there any copyright issues? It is akin, now, let me just say this. I am not an attorney, as you've probably guessed. I'm not an attorney. I'm not giving legal advice. I'm just telling you what I think. I don't know, Terry. I think you can use it because it's like stock photography. All righty. Um, let's say, John says, since it's on a, a new layer, I think you might be able to change curves and hue and contrast. You can, but remember, John, it's changing the square. Like, in other words, we see it here as, we see it. Look, here's what we got. That's what you're changing. So, for example, if I went into curves, right, and started to, to adjust this, right, that's what you get. That's what you get. What's... <laughs> I mean, I'm hearing Siri off the set over here, which is... Okay. Anyway, uh, let's take a look. Let's do this. Here's my friend Paul. Hey, Paul. Let's open up a picture of Paul here. And uh, this was taken in, we were in Scotland last year, and he's shooting something off in the distance. But we can, what we can do is just drop a little, let's drop a puffin in there and hit generate. Now, so far we've just added stuff. We're, we're gonna change gears here in a second, but I wanna show you a video first. Uh, it's, look at that, whoop, there's a puffin. <laughs> This is, but you see why I called this the therapy session? Because I'm a photographer. You're probably a photographer. And you're watching this and you're like, you know, I'm, I don't know what to think of this. I, I'm, I'm somewhat, when I look at other people's photos, I'm going to be like, did they generate those sheep? Now, the nice thing about it is, if you ever looked at a scene and you go, man, it would have been great if a plane was flying over, if there was a, a flock of birds, if there were some sheep grazing, if there was this, if there was that, if there were friends in the background. You've had so many scenarios where you're like, oh yeah, we just, you know, the clouds. If there's one cloud right over that wishing well, wouldn't that have been great? And now when I look at those, I'll be like, did you add that? So, you know, like every once a month on Wednesdays, we do a thing called Blind Critiques on the Grid. And I'm going to be looking at photos going, did you take this? Did you create it? I don't know. So it's, it's, it, it begs a lot of thought-provoking questions that kind of make me lose a little bit of sleep. I, I'm amazed at the technology. I'm blown away. And you guys are just seeing the tip of the iceberg. Uh, I want to show you a video from Terry White. And, uh, and, and, and Terry, of course, is an Adobe evangelist, an Adobe employee for almost 25 years. Um, and, uh, and Terry's wonderful. 
and Terry's uh, been working with this for a while. He's got a great video. I'm going to show his video and then I'll give you some live examples. But here, let's, let's, let's watch Terry for just a sec. Hey everybody, Terry White here and it's my pleasure to take you through what I consider one of the most revolutionary things to happen to Photoshop in the last two decades. Hands down, changes the way we use Photoshop from here on out. All right, I'm talking about Turn generative fill. Is my Let's dive one. in. I need a horizontal version of this shot. You know, we always, sometimes we take with our phone, we're used to taking vertical, but then you need it for a magazine, you need it for a banner, you need something wide. So let's go ahead and use our crop tool and uh, we'll go to our crop tool, there we go. We'll go back to our default colors and we will uncrop this image, we will outcrop. And this is also called out painting. So when I added the caramel sundae, think of that as in painting. When I crop out like this, I'm out painting. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab my rectangular marquee tool once again. We'll go ahead and grab a rectangle and I'm just gonna go ahead and include a little bit of that scene so it kind of knows what I want. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. So hold on my shift key and include a little bit of that scene, a sliver of it. And then we'll go ahead and hit generative fill. And once again, I'm not gonna type anything in. I'm gonna trust Firefly, the AI, to do its thing for me. All right, here we go. And just like that, I have more office. I, it even extended the chair. It gave me the desk with some stuff on it. It expanded the window and gave me three variations to choose from of how it extended the scene. This chair is a little bit too big, so I probably wouldn't go with that one. And if you, as a result you don't like, you can just remove it. And that way now you're keeping just the results you want and you can keep generating until you get more. But I kind of, again, the first one is the charm in this case as well. Is that crazy? Is that just crazy, crazy stuff? Can I show you something? That's the tip of the iceberg. So take a look at the image that you see on screen here. All right, so we have a bride on location in a church and stuff. But here's the thing. The original photo of the bride, well, I'll tell you, she wasn't wearing that wedding dress. She did not have a tiara in her hair. She didn't have those earrings. She didn't have that necklace. And you ready for this? it cut off at her waist. Take a look, the original photo. First off, I wanna take off all the stuff that we've added. That's the original photo. It stopped at her waist. Is that ridiculous? It built her legs. What the heck, what the heck's going on? It literally built the rest of her based on what it thought it would be, right? So I'll just take you through, look, and we'll do it, but look at that. It extended the original dress. I just wasn't crazy about the original dress. So I said, can you generate a different dress? How about this one? And it gave me multiple choices. Then we went and look, added a tiara and it gave you different hairstyles and a different tiaras. Like if I go to that layer, I can choose, was it this tiara or do you like this one better? Or do you like this one better? And I just generated three. I could have generated 30. I could have just kept generating them, right? And then you can go here. And then I added earrings. And then I added the necklace. I mean, come on. This is absolutely just nuts. The perspective is correct. The size is correct. The lighting is correct. I'm gonna take you through this whole thing. We're gonna do it together. I wanna to answer some questions. By the way, if you have questions, if you have comments, if you're worried, if you're confused, just drop us a line here. We're, we're live right now. So happy to answer your questions if I can. Uh, uh, Atala asks, can you merge the layers and then adjust? Absolutely, you can just flatten the layers, merge the layers down, and then it's like any other pixel, any other picture. So they come in on these layers, but you can change them and flatten them. And you know, once you flatten them, it's like any other document. Um, Emmy asks, can you use this to expand the forward photo? Yeah, you just saw uh, Terry do that and I'm gonna do it here for you in just a second. Can you type in a specific number of what you want generated? So I'm, I'm thinking you're asking, I want three sheep. That's a good question. We can try, I haven't done it yet. Uh, Sherry's saying, can you use this to extend an image to fix something cut off like the rest of the part? Oh, we're about to see all of that. And uh, are you able to flatten the image and then apply curves? Of course, yeah, it becomes anything else. All right. And uh, Susie says, 
Soon we will not need cameras. Oh, Susie, you, we're just getting started. All right, let's take a look at the image here, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to where we started. All right, so let's just, I'm gonna revert the image. Now, I, this is important to note before I hit revert. This document will never look the same. I'm not gonna get those earrings. I'm not gonna get those uh, tiaras. I'm not gonna wind up with that wedding dress. This stuff is all generated on the fly. So it's not like there's five of them and then it, it says, how about this one? You wanna choose the one? You... Once I start over, all of those things are gone. That's why if you have stuff that you like, it's important to save it as a Photoshop document, make a duplicate and start from scratch. That way you have the other ones that you want. So watch, I'm gonna hit revert. That stuff's all gone. And here's the original image. Whoops, that's not the original image, hang on. Oh, it must be the original image where I started here. Let me go back, because I've, I've saved this file so many times. Let me just throw everything away. We'll do it that way. No, don't, don't do that. We'll do it the uh, old fashioned way here. Let's just get rid of this stuff. Yeah, yeah, I wanna delete that. Delete that, we're gonna delete that. And then we're gonna start, I'm gonna recrop it so you see the original photo we started with, the one I took is right here. So this is the original shot on location a few years ago I took. All right, that's our original shot. So how do you add something like a tiara? You would go with the lasso tool. And here's the weird thing. I need to say exactly where I want it because if I select her head, you know what it'll give me? A new head. It'll find somebody else. If I just hit generate, don't type anything in there, just hit generate. You don't have to type anything in there. If you don't type it in, you're telling Photoshop, you take a crack at it. Well, I can tell you what it's gonna do. It's gonna give me a new bride. Okay, so in this case it said, and this is important. There are certain things that it's like, mm, are you trying to do something naughty? I'm not sure. So it brings up that warning that says, I'm not doing it. There's something funky here. So it's not gonna allow you to do inappropriate things. It's not gonna let you uh, take a picture of somebody, add a gun and put them in the murder scene. <laughs> it literally doesn't let you do those things. It doesn't let you do things that are inappropriate and you shouldn't be doing those inappropriate stuff anyway. So if it senses you're trying to do something funky here, you'll get that warning. Now I have found that in some cases, like obviously I'm not trying to do anything nefarious here. Um, I can try again, just hit generative fill, and often just trying again, it'll go, oh, okay. <laughs> Sometimes, especially if you make the, the, the thing too loose, it should be loose, it should not be a tight selection, like don't select that, ah, it's doing it again. All right, well, I'm gonna show you it the right way anyway. I would just select her hair. You don't have to be right on it, let it dig in a little into her skin. Say, I want a tiara like there, I want a tiara. Now type in, and I want to, you have to say what kind or you're going to get like something that looks like the queen, right? You need to go in here and say bridal tiara, tiara, hit generate, and that should do it. Let's go and give it a sec or 15, your choice. Yeah, there we go. Now you notice it also changed the hair because it's regenerating it, right? But remember, we have three generations. I've generally found, wow, completely different, right? I have found that often the second one or the third one is the best one. It's not always the first one. Uh, in fact, it seems like there's a different one. Let's just hit generate again. And also, um, you can go over to the properties panel and you can click on the thumbnails or you can use the left and right arrows inside this little floating thing right here. So there's one, there's number two, we decided to put no tiara in there. Or oh, put a little thing in the back actually. I don't like crazy about that. Let's hit generate again. Now, what's nice is we have six of these. Here we're gonna have nine, we're gonna add 12, 16, whatever. When you save this, it'll save all of the ones that you don't get rid of. Let's check the next one. That one's all right. That's kind of funky. I don't know, let's hit generate again. <laughs> that one's kind of weird. John wants to know, are these AI generations high res that would scale well? I wouldn't scale them up. So what they are, and this is interesting, this is very interesting. They create a square of the, in the area at a maximum size of 1024 by 1024. 
So you don't want to take a big sky and do it all at once. Like if you want a sky, you'll make a square and another square and another square. So your resolution stays pretty good. So at this point in this beta, it's doing 1024. But I mean, obviously the, the area that I just added is not 1024. Let's look at some other ones here. Well, that's not terrible. Let's just go with this one because I'm tired of generating them. <laughs> but you could hit generate again. All right, now you want to put a necklace in. Here's what you're going to do. Just select the, where you want the necklace to kind of be, something in this area maybe, and then type in bridal necklace. If you don't type in bridal, you won't get, it won't be contextual. You'll get some crazy, some crazy weird thing. So let's see what this does. This is going to be different than the necklace I put in because the, I, the, the uh, selection I made is different. There you go. Boom. Done. <laughs> or you can choose this necklace or this necklace. Or if you don't like any of those, just hit generate again and it will generate a new set of necklaces. Now, what about the bridal gown? All right. We can change that. Uh, let's Let's first do the trick that Terry showed. Let's go get the crop tool and say, you know, let's add some more into this. Just expand down. All right. Once you've done that, hit return. And then you're going to get the rectangular marquee tool and say, and, and dig into the photo a little. It helps if you actually dig in a bit. Hit, don't write anything in there. It knows what to do. You're like, you take a look. You, I, I added emptiness. If I don't type something in there, See if you can extend this dress and make sense. Now this, this could look great or it could look horrible. It doesn't always hit it first time. Look at that. It made it into like a cocktail dress. Now, the second one, it didn't do at all. So just hit X. And then the third one is that dress. And it extended the, I'm not crazy about any of those. Hit generate again, and just let it do its thing. And you can see I got a completely different dress last time, but I haven't, I haven't done the dress. We're just extending the one that we've got. That's actually not bad, that last one. All right, it didn't like the first one, so we'll hit that. And then the next one, it added some weird stuff, <laughs> some door ornaments, probably not necessary. And the third one, we're back to this. Now, at this point, you could go, all right, well, let's, I'm not crazy about this dress, so, this bridal gown and brides love it when you change their dress after the fact. <laughs> Let's just kind of make a very loose selection and just type in bridal gown and click generate. But it was already going to choose a bridal gown. It wasn't going to put in like nightclub clothes, but just in case it doesn't hurt to put in bridal gown. Again, it, it may be great or it may be awful. Let's take a look. Now, there you go. That's not bad, except for her hand. Look at her hand. Her hand's funky. All right, there are two things that it does not generate well. Sometimes hands are funky, and often faces are funky because they're drawing from a bunch. They're creating a new face. So if you say, you know, put a mechanic there, he might look great, or it might be eyes from this one, nose from this one, mouth from this one, and it just looks funky. That's something they're still developing and it'll get better and better. But right now, hands, animals, and sometimes animals, and sometimes hands. Now, you've got a layer mask right on there. The layer mask is already there. So you can click on the layer mask and you can say subtract from this mask and then you could just paint back in the original hand. So we would paint back in right here. Now you have to be a little more careful than I'm being right? But that way you can kind of get rid of that. Now that's a sloppy job, but you, you see what I'm saying. So that's why it's nice that it has a layer mask already on it. Then you'd have to go in here and subtract from the mask and then try to put as much back in here as you can. I'm, I'm doing a horrible job, but you get the idea. All right. So that's how we got to the image that I saw before. Let's try a different picture. Let me close that one. And here's one. Take a look. And you're going to say, well, do you want to extend down? Nope, I already did. That's the original photo I took. And this is the extended. Come on, that's just amazing. And it kept the fall off of the light because you could see I had a light on, the, on this side and I, I intentionally had it fall off fast. 
So it's really just lighting her, her head and shoulders, which is dandruff. Because of dandruff. <laughs> it's, a, it's a stupid joke. Okay. And then it added that in. I mean, come on. It's just ridiculous. All right. Uh, some questions. George says, do you have to have a subscription to Adobe stock to do this? Nope. 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 Just go download the, uh, the beta. Um, will it match the resolution of the image? I kind of, we already talked a little bit about that. How long of a search string can you put in? I don't know. I haven't reached a, a, a limit. I'm not sure that there is a word limit, but it won't take you long to just type it in and find out for yourself. But usually it's something very, very simple. Are the elements it's generating created from royalty-free images? Yes, it is. Uh, I'm sure they're from Adobe. They're coming from their stock collection of millions and millions and millions of photos. Yes, it is. All right. So anyway, I just wanted to show you that. But let's do this. All right. Let's try this. Part of her arm is missing over here and a lot of her head. But that's just the way I compose the shot. So I'm not worried about it. But if you wanted to change your mind, you could go over here. Let's add a little more room over there. And then you're going to get whatever selection tool you're comfortable with. I use a rectangle a lot for this stuff and hit generate. Now you can also just hit return once you, if you're not going to type anything in there, you can just hit return and it'll do its thing. Let's watch. Here we go. Notice part of her arm is missing. It's cut off on the left. Look at that. It extended the wall. It did all this stuff. It's crazy. Now let's try going up. Let's see if we can add a little bit more of her head. It's, it's a little trickier going up than it is. It does really well on the sides. The head could be funky. Let's find out. Generative fill. Just hit generate. And let's go. And again, of course, if you have questions, Marcus says, this is nuts. John says, tis witchcraft. <laughs> John says, I'm going to need a bigger hard drive. All right. For some reason, it's giving me that warning again. Like, oh, you're trying to do something bad. I'm not trying to do something. So I'm going to reselect and just see. It's not trying to do something bad. I'm trying to do something good. Lakita says, this will change image competition forever. It seems there's no way to tell what's real and what's generated. What will this do to photo competitions? Oh, come on. I can't believe it's doing this. So it, uh, it, it did this. I was able to do this many times and today now it decides no. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to undo all this. I'm going to undo my crop. Let me go back and I am going to, oh, by the way, I had three variations on that side. Look, I could do variation A, variation B, which I like better or variation C. It's variation B. Let's try uh, going up here again. Let's go to the original image. Maybe that'll help. And let's pull up this much. Let's just go a little ways and see if this will fix it. Now, I've had to do this a number of times when you're doing this stuff. Sometimes it just gives you the warning for no reason. You're not doing anything bad, but it thinks you are. It's a pretty big uh, policeman. So hang on. It's looking good. Let's go. Come on. Ah, if it fills it with black, it didn't work. But look at the third one. Is it? Oh, yes. Yes, it is. It filled in with the third one. So now we, you can see we probably needed to go a little bit higher to get that. But look at that. Right. Remember, our, it added this side over here. I'm excuse me. It added the top and the side. So here's what we had added the top. That's, that's pretty amazing. All right. So here's what I want you guys to think about when we're thinking about all this, because this does change a lot of stuff. All these things and all these comments that you have, what will this do to photo competitions? Uh, uh, this is all true. Here's the thing. Everything that I've shown you today, there's not a single thing today if you were really good at Photoshop and very, very patient and had the time, you couldn't do. Could I have flipped her arm over, put it over there, blended it in? Could I have done all that? Could I have added that extra wall over there? Could I have extended her hair and, and 
maybe used another picture of her from that day and popped it in there and stuff. Sure. I could have done it. It might have taken me an hour or two. That's what this is doing. I haven't seen anything today that you can't do. I can go find a stock photo with sheep, select it, bring them in, blend it, flip them so the light's the same way. It just all took so much time. So we haven't seen anything today that you couldn't do on your own if you were really good at Photoshop and you were really patient. But what this does and where this also becomes worrisome if you've spent years and years and years learning Photoshop and you're an ace and you're just really good at it, now my kids could go in and type in, add an owl, add a cloud, add some sheep, add a lake, add a rowboat, add whatever, and boom, it's done. It has lowered that bar of creativity. So it's, it's going to shift how we work in Photoshop from... I'm a production manager and I know how to do all this stuff and extend all this stuff and retouch to what, what can I do creatively? It's going to, and, and the people that are going to do the best with this are people that come up with creative things to do. They'll look at a photo and go, oh, let's try this or let's try that. Guys, we've got a lot more to see here too. I don't want to take two, I don't want to take your whole morning, but uh, there's some more stuff. So I'm going to, I, I want to play another one of Terry's videos real quick. They're short, but they're really, really good. And I thank you, Terry, for sharing those with us today. So let's look at Terry's next video and then we're going to, we're going to see what's next. So we'll be right back. Don't go. Here's Terry. Go ahead and move over to this shot. This is a, a, a panel that I did from Milan in Italy years ago. And I never really used it because I, I didn't get there early enough and I got all these tourists in the way. So I thought, well, could I use AI to kind of be a tourist remover? <laughs> so let's go ahead and grab my lasso tool and let's just do one gigantic lasso around all of this stuff and all of these people all the way over here. I'm going to come I'm all the way back around the top like so there we go and i'm even going to hold down my shift key and get this stuff over here as well to add to that selection now when i click generative fill this time i'm not going to type anything in i'm just going to click generate and see what it thinks it needs so just no prompt generate kind of maybe it will remove those people let's see what it does and just like that i have a clean scene for my milan cathedral shot and i have three different versions of it i kind of like the first one that it came up with and there's my shot I would now print this out and hang it on the wall. Now keep in mind, you don't always have to just remove something. You can add something as well. So if I were to go up here and choose uh, generative fill and type in clouds, let's see what it gives me for clouds. And you can make multiple selections. So if I want to put different clouds in different parts of the sky, shift, select different parts of the sky and then generate the clouds and it would put them in a different places. So there we are, we have our clouds. And again, I can toggle three through, even though it gave me birds that time, it gave me a cartoon cloud. Um, <laughs> the clouds I want and we'll stick with those for now and if I wanted to generate more I just do another selection and generate more or hit generate more now in the same area and let it do it. Terry so I want to kind of follow up on what Terry just showed uh, the picture you see on screen is from a very very famous bookstore in Porto uh, Portugal I was just there a few weeks ago and one of the things I wanted to do was visit this this bookstore what you're seeing here is the bookstore at the very end of the day. So this bookstore is so popular that there are hundreds of people in line to go inside and just see it. It's one of the most beautiful bookstores in the world and I wanted to take pictures of it. And uh, anyway, long story short, I'm in there and, and I'm doing that technique that we used to do in the old days of Photoshop, like yesterday, where you, you stand there and you take a picture every 15 seconds, like you just, you stand there and hold as steady as you can because, of course, they don't let you have a... It's absolutely... You can't tell from this picture. It's, it's mobbed in there. There's hundreds of people in there. You can't even move, right? And the stairs are just packed full of people all the time. I waited to get it down to these, like, what, 12 people or something? So I'm standing there, and you take all these pictures, and then you go into meeting them. It removes some. It removed a lot of them, but I had to spend about two hours painstakingly going in and removing the people upstairs in between all the stuff and trying to replace some stairs. And it got rid of most of it. So I would say if this was a four hour job, the way I used to do it, got it down to two hours. 
Now it's two minutes. So here's what you would do. You would just go in here and you would say, okay, well, these two people on the stairs, they got to go. Now, what I would do in a situation like this is do what Terry did, is uh, hit this second checkbox here so you don't have to keep holding the shift key and say, let's get this guy out of here and get this one out of here. And then just hit generative fill. You don't have to write in anything. It knows what to do. You want those people out, right? So give it a second. And it may not do perfect the first time. I've noticed that in some of these cases, especially if they're moving people, you might have to do it twice or it leaves a little bit of foot or something. But the stuff it leaves is usually so easy. Look at that. Come on. That's crazy. And that's the, that's the default one. We have this choice and this choice. That one looks pretty good. And then what about these people over on the sides? Like, look at this whole family here. What are they doing? They're ruining my shot. Let's just select this whole family and then hit generative fill. Now, the problem, oh, got to hit generate. Problem is, look at all the staircase and the banister and all that detail. That's what took forever was cloning all that in and trying to figure out what's behind them. Like, I don't know what was behind them. Who knows? So uh, how about that? Right? Look at that. And it's, it's not 100% perfect, but I don't have to go with that one. Ooh, I like that one better. And folks, we have a winner. So yeah, you might have to go and do a little touch up there. How about these people over here? I hate these people. Really, they're ruining my shot. To generate. Give it a sec. And by a sec, of course, I mean 15 seconds. Uh, Kalyan asks, will it add metadata to indicate generated images? I do not believe so. Oh, look at that up there. Look at that. Did you see that? Now I have different variations. I've got that variation and I got this one. And you can choose the one you want. That's just crazy. This is blowing my mind. <laughs> Linda says, what? This is magic. Um, Emmy says, you could do some of this with Photoshop. It would just take forever. Yes, it would. Uh, Susie says, I remember doing all the complex things as long ago as CS2. New people, and, and, and Susie, I think, is talking about new Photoshop users, will never understand how it was done. It was, it was tough. Uh, Doug says, this is crazy, but it's very interesting. Uh, Bruce says, I'm the photo editor for a BWD magazine. This can be a game changer when it comes to making photos work in a layout. Absolutely. John says, I have so many photos with tourists in them. Time to get to work. So that's what I've been doing. This was the first thing I did. I went back to this picture that I spent hours on. I'm like, ah. So uh, that's that one. Uh, I want to show you a couple of other things here. We're, we're almost out of time, but there's, there's more to show. Uh, but don't worry. Like I said, we have an entire class on Kelby One uh, that has all of the new stuff in it. And we go into detail and we talk about everything. So... That's, that's coming up immediately. So take a look at this image. So this is a whole nother way of thinking. This is where you're asking it to generate the entire background for you. So the original photograph is this shot in my studio right over here to my right. So we got soft boxes in the shot. We got everything in the shot and you're asking it to generate. So I use different words now. What's neat about this is when I click on a background, it's going to tell you what words in the properties panel over here, it'll tell you what words were used. Rock concert stage for this one, right? Or you can choose this one. And then I chose like nightclub. That looks stupid. That one's stupid. That's, oh, see how all the people look weird? That's what I'm talking about. I did city street. That was weird. That's okay. So look at that one. That one looks really realistic. Here's like a studio background with shadows, right? Here's a concert stage. There's a different one. These are all just generated. These were, I said, these, I said the words in the spotlight and look at that. It just generated it and generated the shadows on the floor, the shadows going in different directions. Look at the shadow behind her on the wall, right? It's, it's just nuts. And this is from just, now here's how you do this. I'm going to show you what you would do. In these cases, what you would do is this. You would start by saying, look down here, 
The contextual menu already figures. You probably want to select subject, right? Yep, select subject. Now, I need to expand the selection. Remember, this works best if you don't have tight selections. You want it to be a little loose. So I need to expand it by 20 pixels. Where's expand? Well, it's right down here in the little pop-up menu. There it is, expand selection. 20 pixels is fine. Then you're going to inverse. Where do I choose inverse? It's right down here. The contextual menu, I'm telling you, this menu is the boss. All right, now I've got the background. Now that the background is selected and it's not right tied up against her, I can type in something different. So let's type in, uh, let's type in Photo Studio. Just see what happens. Hit generate and wait. Bob Crow says AI is just the tip of the iceberg. Richard says you won't have to use like 90% of the rest of Photoshop. Yeah, so this is gonna change the way that I'll be teaching Photoshop because I need to be teaching how to clean up after AI, right? A lot of that kind of stuff. There's a little bit of cleanup left sometimes. More Photo Studio stuff. More for, look what it did to those soft boxes. Remember, it's generating this stuff. That's stupid. Let's try something else. Let's try, what else will we do? Let's just say, I don't know, uh, a stage. You're on stage. Let's hit generate. But look at the shadows on her, under her feet and everything. I mean, it does a pretty good job, except for, uh, you need to ask for your money back on those soft boxes. I think that's, look at that, right? I don't know what's going on. It's a bad stage. And that's just kind of hokey, but that one's not bad. That one's not bad. This one actually, that looks pretty realistic. If I showed you this, I opened this image, you wouldn't go, wait a minute, she was added after the fact, right? Uh, oh, here we go, Natalie's right on the money. This will be so useful for underwear people who walk right into your photos. Yes, they do. Uh, Linda says, I, I just can't believe this. I'm still trying to pick my jaw up off the floor. I, I agree, I, I, I totally agree. This is just absolutely mind-numbing stuff. Um, Take a look at this shot here. So this is one I took last week in New York. I did a, a travel photography workshop in New York and I rented a, uh, for the class, I rented this old 1960s checker cab. We found this amazing street near Wall Street and we did a whole photo shoot there. So see the woman uh, on the right? That's not one of the people in the class. I just said, add a woman leading on the wall, <laughs> right? So look at the stuff that I was able to do just by typing. Uh, let's just start up at the top. I removed reflections. I just selected it and just hit go. I didn't even tell it what to do. So look, different reflections. I got rid of those. That's what was really there, that square. That's reflecting the sky. That was what was really there. But I was able to just select those areas and say get rid of most of them. I added the license plate. I just made a selection and say add license plate. So you would just do this. You would go over here. You would say, or oh, you could put it in the middle. I want a license plate here, maybe right there. And you just type in license plate. Hit generate. Give it a minute. John's asking, Scott, can I take a picture out of Lightroom? Look at that. Look at it. Even put letters in and stuff. Uh, can I take a picture out of Lightroom and move it into Photoshop beta instead of regular Photoshop and then go back to Lightroom? Yeah. So what you'd have to do, John, is in Lightroom, uh, go to the preferences, go to external editing, and for your editor, choose the beta instead of the other one instead of the standard Photoshop. All right, now I have other license plates to choose from. Cal California love. So anyway, yeah, you, it just generated that, right? And then over here, generated her right in that wall. It took the little plate off the front, the insignia off the front there, right? And there's the, there's the uh, license plate. So you could just select an area like I did here, under this light. And just type in 
person leaning against wall. Generate, give it a second. St Stu says, I'm going to try to add the cab. <laughs> Hang on. Stu got a great shot of this cab when we were there. He was there with me in New York. All right. What it added was, looks like another door. Nice. What's this? Oh, it got rid of the door. What's this? It put some uh, electrical stuff there. All right. So let's just say person. And let's see what that does. Because it gave me doors. This will happen sometimes where it's just totally like, oh, you, you over-described it. And also, if you, if you, it doesn't work for stuff like put a big person there, put a little person there. It's going to scale it. So here's someone walking. There you go. There's your dude leaning against the wall. And there she is leaning against the wall, but she's floating a little bit above the wall. There we go. He's, that's, uh, I, I know, my mind is blown. So, all right. Uh, oh, Nelson says this would be good for high school senior backdrops. Oh, yeah, you can just drop them in there. <laughs> Jay, Jay, what's up? Says, can you add chicken sandwiches to a photo? Yes, you can, Jay. Of course, you can, you can always. You know what? A chicken sandwich is appropriate in any situation. By the way, I have a new chicken on, on the grid. I'll be talking about a new chicken sandwich. It's phenomenal, and it's from a place you wouldn't expect. All right, let's take a look at one or one more of Terry's videos. We've got another video with some more mind blowing stuff. Check it out. All right, now this is a real world scenario that I really wanted to challenge the AI. If you had to manually remove the guy in the middle, we don't have to, but I just wanted to see what it would do. Imagine how much work that would take. You would have to clone in where the steps would have been. You would have to make up this guy in the blue on the, on the right here. You'd have to make up what he looked like because he's completely covered, including his shoulder and his pants. And then you'd have to, you know, of course, put the steps in under the leg here and under the arm. And so this would take me hours to do this right. And I may not ever like the way it looks if I can't get it to look just right. So I really wanted to challenge Firefly built into Photoshop and see what it would do. So I'm going to go to my select menu. I'm going to load in that selection just of the, the lasso just to save time. So we'll just load that lasso in. And I lassoed all the way around him. I lassoed the little part under the leg, the little part under the arm. I kind of cut into the guy on the pink a little bit so it would blend in better. And again, I kind of cut into the guy on the, on the right here on purpose. All right, so now that I got that selection, we're going to go to generative fill. And I will warn you that each time I it like it didn't do it right away because sometimes it tried to guess and think that I wanted to put some people in the middle. I wanted to replace them with a different person. So the first time I did this, it took five tries to get it to where it would remove him. Let's see what we get this time. The first, you know, just trying it from scratch and it's starting to do a better job removing him. I can already see that that's not what I want. This time I put a kind of a weird looking person there. We're going to take that one out. And this time it got it right on the first try. Look at that. Like that's the one I would keep. Look at the steps. Look at how it built his body. Look at the shadows. Look at everything it did as if that guy was never sitting there. It did it in about 20 seconds. What would take me hours or maybe never to get it just right in Photoshop. This is what I mean by it changes everything. Alrighty, so uh, thank you, Terry. <clears throat> Isn't that unbelievable? I mean, that kind of stuff is gonna be so useful. Take a look on screen. I'll just give you an example here. Take a look, we've got our bride and groom, right? And uh, let's just, let's, will it get rid of the groom and uh, replace the wall and, and the curtain? Yeah, yeah, I did. We're gonna, I'll show you how we did it. But I did it the same way I do all the rest. You just select what you don't want there. So it's great at adding stuff. It's incredible at taking away stuff. The reason is it imagines what's behind it and it adds it in. So take a look. Here are the variations. I could have had this variation. I don't like that one because there's a little bit of weird stuff here. And it extended this down too far. Look at variation number two. It went all the way to the floor. That's acceptable. But number three, actually, kind of, you can see it turning there, and you've got the, the, I just thought that was the best of the three. So here's how we did it. Let's throw that away. Here's how we did it. We uh, 
took. Believe it or not, they weren't married. These are professional models. They look pretty happy, though. Okay, let's take their lasso tool. I'll make sure I'm back off a little so you can see the whole thing. Here we go. We're going to go right in here. Remember, you want to dig into your subject a little bit and say, all right, he's got to go. Because they broke up immediately after being married. It was sad, very sad. Just hit generative fill and then hit generate. Don't type in get rid of the groom or anything. If you want it to go away, don't do anything. Pamela says, can you start in the bridge? Yeah, I've been opening all these from bridge. So yeah, you can start from the bridge. Oh, come on. Now it doesn't want me to remove them. All right, that's just mean because it did it first time, last time, and now it's being more. Let's try a rectangle. Now let's move it over just a hair. Let's try that. Because sometimes I have found that just changing the selection seems to do the trick. I hope it doesn't change your face because sometimes it will do that. If you select someone's face, it puts a new face in, except for when it doesn't. Oh, there we go. So here, what do we have? We have him. There we go. Gone. Gone, but her face has changed. Look, it changed part of her face. All right, let's try it this way. Let's make a selection of him and her, but let's deselect her face. Let's deselect that part. And now let's try it again and hopefully, and this will be part of the learning curve of this, is figuring out what will it let you get away with, what things will it let you do, which selections work. And this is something that you will just learn over time. Literally, oh, it put a different guy in. Now she's cheating. This is not good. Let's see. Oh, God, she gets around. <laughs> this, these are the groomsmen, and they're very handsy. Okay. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. This is part of the learning curve. Yeah, it is. All right, I want to show you another one. Uh, Stu, Stu says, bye-bye, ex-boyfriends and ex-girlfriends and ex-spouses. <laughs> Linda says, no freaking way. All right, over here. So this is a shot I did on location. Um, and uh, I, you, can, you can see the behind the scenes shoot over on my YouTube page. But anyway, so this is not the original shot. This is an enhanced shot because the original shot was much smaller. The original shot was just that. Just that is the original photo. Her head's cut off. The tent is cut off. Her legs are cut off. That's the full original shot. Then I expanded down. Look how it expanded the chair and added legs. And they look real. Come on. Then we went over here and I added the top. And it added her hair in. And look how realistic it is. It looks right on the money. And it generated that. Then I added this side. Now, there was an issue when I added this side. The tent's kind of funky and there's this line. That happens sometimes, which is why, like a lot of the things that I will be teaching are how to clean up stuff like this. So over here, I removed that line, I just cloned it out. Then what I did to finish this off was I copied this side over here and flipped it over to this side. So that was a manual thing I did in Photoshop was to copy it, flip it over there, and then erase, you know, just mask, add a layer mask and mask out that stuff. And here's what that looked like. I flipped it over and I rotated it. So you could see the, the actual file here. I rotated it. I cloned out stuff you know, I needed to clone out. So that's how we got to the final image. But that's kind of being what, where we're at. Honestly, you can just type in words. I mean, type in words and you'll figure out which words work and which ones don't. And when you see my class here at Kelby One, I'll go into all that stuff. And we're, we're gonna, we got some crazy examples and stuff where we're doing reflections and, and water and cobblestone streets and just what, uh, it's just crazy. It's all just crazy. Um, Paul says, can you add some street art on the wall? Could you add some graffiti on the wall? I, I bet you probably could. I haven't tried it, but you know what? Do I still have that image handy? Let's go try it. It was the taxi image. Well, if I just go to my bridge here, I can uh, go to, where's the taxi? Uh, taxi. There it is. 
All right, let's get rid of the people on the wall. Let's get rid of everything else. All right, and let's just choose a wall. Let's choose the same wall, make it loose, and we'll say G-R-A-F-F-I-T-I. -I. Is that correct? And by the way, you can only, at this point, you can only type in English. I'm sure they're, they will expand it you know, eventually to add other languages. But right now it's English only. And let's see what it does if it adds graffiti. If I spelled it right, maybe. Yeah, boom! <laughs> oh, look at that. There's some more. There's some more. I like the first one. And look at the spotlight. Do you notice that it, it replaced the spotlight from the light above it? Look at the light. I mean, come on, guys. This is crazy. So that answers Paul's questions. Okay. We have one more video from Terry, and we're going to wrap up here shortly, but I want you to catch this one, so check out this, this, this little video real quick. Let's go in and talk about changing an outfit completely. Let's sit, hit Select Subject. So that will select him. We're going to invert that selection right here on the contextual taskbar. Invert that selection. So now it's the background. And now we're going to also use the contextual taskbar to expand the selection by that magical 20 pixels. And that will cut in around the edge. Because what I want to do is replace this background first. So we'll do generative fill. We'll do um, snow covered, covered mountain. One time I spelled mountain wrong. I got some really weird results. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so make sure your spelling's right. Nice, nice snow covered mountain, nice snow covered mountain. Not so well, the background mountains are snow covered, so we'll, they all count. All right, so I kind of like probably this first one the best, but now he looks wrong. He doesn't look like he should be wearing um, uh, a, sh a shirt like that. So I'm just gonna uh, make a new layer with the composite so far, and we're just gonna go ahead and make that selection that I started with the lasso. Come all the way around here. And this is the reason why I didn't use the object selection tool because I kind of want some of his neck selected as well. So we'll do generative fill and we'll give him a ski jacket. All right, let's see what we get there. All right, now he's looking more like he's suited to be outside with the snow covered mountain. And we can give him a hat and sunglasses, but you get the idea. So. This is just a quick little deep dive kind of on what generative, fill, what generative fill is capable of in Photoshop. With that said, I want you to go ahead and download that public beta, give it a shot, unlimited use right now, continue working with it, playing with it with your own images, seeing what you can push the boundaries of like I did with moving that guy in the middle. And I want you to have fun. Wow, thank you, Terry. It's just incredible, the stuff that you can do. Take a look on the image on screen here, all right? That is not our original image. That's not the one I shot in the studio she was wearing this that day. I just selected the shirt and said, change blouse is what I wrote. And look at that one. And it gave me different variations. That variation, this variation, that variation, with a little scarf for Rooney. Yeah, crazy. All right, so that's, you're getting the tip of the iceberg. I, I encourage you, we're, we're about to release this class uh, on all the new stuff, because there are four more features I'm gonna talk about really, really briefly um, that are coming up uh, that have been released today by Adobe, so you can go download it. But those features are in your regular Photoshop. There's four features. Uh, one of them you've already learned about, that taskbar. That is so incredibly handy. You're gonna love it way more than you think you will. That's number one, but there's three other features. This other one, this, re, this generative, this creative uh, gener thing, generative fill, thank you, uh, is only in the beta. They're still working on it. I mean, we saw a couple times they did some funky stuff. They're still working on it, but it's just gonna get better and better and better. So that's really, that's pretty amazing right there. Um, Let's go over the other features and we'll wrap things up. Uh, and let's see, amazing for Christmas season backgrounds. This will be a game changer, says Mary. Absolutely. Doug says, can I add Scott Kelby? Sure, go grab a picture of me, pop it right in. But you don't need this for that. You can just 
you know. Uh, Nelson says, downloaded it. John Duke says, National Enquirer is going to have a field day with this. Yeah, it's just going to make it easier to do the stuff they're already doing. Okay, let's talk about the four new features. Number one, you already learned about the taskbar. Uh, number two is an amazing tool. They already released it in beta. Now it's part of Photoshop. And it is the object remove, not the, what's it called here? It is called the remove tool. Just simply the remove tool. Here you got a cute doggo. You got a dog there. You got the dog. And uh, I want to remove the fence in front of him. All you do is this. Uh, there is a, there's a feature called remove after each stroke. So if I did a stroke, it would remove it. But I recommend turning that off so you can, when it's something like this, you can just paint and paint and take your, uh, your, your uh, finger off the mouse and just paint over what you want. So I'm going to just, I'm not going to do every bit of this, but you'll get the idea. And you got, you got a little of the fence over that dog. We got to get the dog out of here. Let's get this here. Go right there, down this way. This is enough. When you get to the end of it, there's one more, get that. Just hit that checkbox, wait a few seconds. And you got that dog. There's a little spot missing right there. So you would just switch to, well, you don't even have to switch. And hit okay. Done. That didn't do the greatest job, let's do it again. There you go. So it's a very, very, very smarter than, it's way better than the healing brush, better than content aware and all. It is using AI. So it is the other tools use part of the image. This one says, I know what a dog looks like. I know what this dog probably looks like. I'm gonna analyze it and I know it's back there. So it's for removing stuff and it works phenomenally well. So it is a whole nother uh, uh, done. Uh, Paul says, is this stream recorded so I can show my wife later? This is recorded. Well, first off, it's on my Facebook page. So just live right there. So you can go watch this anytime. Just go to my Facebook page, facebook.com slash S Kelby. So it looks like Skelby, S-K-E-L-B-Y. And it's sitting right there. You can rewatch it uh, now. All right, there's that. That's feature number two, and that, that's going to be the new go-to tool instead of the healing brush and the rest of them. Number three is there are live gradients. So let's go back to our studio portrait here, right? Let's throw that other layer away, and let's just go select subject, and uh, we'll do that. And then let's hit the inverse button down here so it's on the background. So, well, actually, let's just put her up on her own layer so we have just her on her own layer like that. So now we can use this new live gradient tool. So you've always been able to make gradients in Photoshop, right? You drag it, it makes a gradient, but your gradient's stuck there. Like it's stuck, you can't re-edit it. You can delete it, but it's stuck. Not anymore. Now you can just go grab a gradient like this, drag it back there, and uh, it's completely re-editable. So I've dragged it, I've let go, but you can move it. Why won't my... <laughs> Why won't, why won't my curtain, there we go. You can move it, you can change it. Oh my, I don't know what's going on with my mouse. My mouse is sticking. It's not Photoshop, it's my, my trackpad is like not working. I don't know. Oh, everything's lagging. I, I don't know what's going on here. But anyway, you can see what it does. You can double click on any stop and bring up and choose a different color and it's live. Like while you're doing it, which is like, if you use gradients, this is mind blowing. Like what? So that's what it is. It's completely live. You can edit it. You can add points. You can do whatever. You can change the type of gradient. You can go up here and change it to different types of gradients. And you can usually move it except for right now. I don't know what's going on. That just happens when you do demos. Things happen like that. It's crazy. Um, what is the other one? We got the remove. We got, oh, this is, next one's pretty cool. We use the same photo too. Let me undo all this stuff. I probably need to quit Photoshop and restart it would probably fix this, but anyway. Here's what it is, very cool thing. There is a new thing called adjustment presets. They live over here in this adjustments panel. And what's neat about them is you could say, well, Scott, don't we already have presets like in camera or on stuff? Yeah, we do. 
But you could go in here and like we'll go to portraits and you could choose, you know, this warmer one, this warmer one, choose whatever you want. But did you notice when you click on it, it populates your layers panel with all of the, the adjustments it needed to make that look. So you can turn on or off or edit or mask any individual one of these. So it's not just a preset that's stuck there. It populates your layers palette with all of the adjustments it took to make that look. So they're completely super editable, undoable, maskable, and everything else after the fact. And that's pretty cool. So those are the new things. And those are all good. They're all moving Photoshop forward. They're all great. The remove tool is amazing. But that generative fill, it hurts my head. All right. Astu says, this can help when you need to make a change and it would cost a fortune to get the model back and reshoot. Yeah, uh, this will be great for removing power lines. Absolutely. Jay says, thanks for this. What a great way to start today. You're very welcome. Nelson says, looking forward to the class. Paul says, already downloaded it. Can't wait to play with it. I hope you do the same. Give it a shot. See what you think. Don't forget, you can run the beta and the regular version concurrently. But what's going to happen is the beta is very stable. And I've just been working in the beta just, you know, it's, I will tell you this, I want to warn you about one thing and then we'll go. This will suck hours out of your day. You'll think, I'll just try it and you can't stop. Because it, the, what you can do, you'll start typing in and I've done it for hours on end. You don't even realize how fast the time goes by because you're, you're seeing miracles happen in front of you. So congratulations to Adobe on being able to engineer something like this and that the beta version is so good and so usable. Uh, it's, it's really just, I, I knew stuff like this was coming. I just thought it would be five and 10 years from now before we could just say, add this, remove that, expand that, fix this. And it just does it. Add a reflection, make the water, uh, make a, put water on a cobblestone street, make it look wet. All those things that we had to do all these things for now, it's just typing. It's going to change the world. It's going to change the world of Photoshop, certainly the world of photography, the world of post-processing and editing. And we've only just begun. So let's embrace the change because we don't have another choice. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks to all our Kelby One members. Thanks to my crew here. Thanks to all of our sponsors. And uh, tomorrow on The Grid, Wednesday at 1 p.m., we will be Wednesday, May 24th at 1 p.m. We'll be discussing this. We'll be showing more examples. We'll be taking your comments. We're giving away a bunch of stuff. It should be fun. You can go watch it on my Facebook page, on YouTube, on the Kelby One, wherever you watch. It's the great, it's weekly photography talk show with myself and Mr. Kuna, who is winging his way back from gallivanting out west at a uh, nighttime photography conference where he had a ball. We'll see you guys hopefully tomorrow at one o'clock. Thanks very much. Take care.